In this video, I will explain some details of my new linear actuator design. This actuator will be part of a home-built 6 degree of freedom motion platform for my flight simulator cockpit. The 6 degree of freedom motion platform is based on a classical steward platform, which makes use of 6 linear actuators. In my design, I have lowered the cockpit with respect to the actuator attach points. This has the advantage that the total height of the structure is much lower, it also reduces false cues during rotation and allows the use of relatively long actuators. The following section provides some details of the linear actuator design. The basic actuator consists of an 18 mm drive shaft, which slides in two Teflon bearings. The drive shaft is moved by a dual pulley belt system to achieve symmetric forces in the drive structure. A DC motor drives the timing belts via a transmission ratio of 3.6. The total shaft travel is around 40 cm. To achieve balanced operation under static load, a bungee system is added. The bungee will add a force to the drive shaft which is equal but opposite to the payload force. The total actuator is mounted in a wooden box structure. Let's have a look at some of the details. As a protection, end stop blocks are mounted on the two timing belts. The rubber ends will block the drive at the limits of its travel. The end stop blocks will also activate end-stop switches. There are two end-stop switches at both ends of the drive. The drive shaft position is sensed by a 10-turn potentiometer, which is coupled with gears to the belt drive. The drive shaft is coupled to the timing belts via a wooden block with grooves and a metal bracket. The bungee is directly connected to the metal bracket, so there is no static force on the timing belts. To mount the DC motor, a wooden support is added to the sideboard. The DC motor is then fastened by two large hose clamps. The motor belt drive can be tensioned by adjusting the two belt tensioners on the top plate. In 6 degree of freedom setups, the complete actuator must be able to move in two directions. A universal joint is added to the backplate for this purpose. The front end of the actuator has a rod end bearing, which allows freedom of movement as well. Here you can see all components needed to build one actuator. I will show the assembly step by step. First comes the floorboard. It is made of 18 mm high quality multiplex and has all the cutouts for the belts and pulleys. These are the two support blocks for the drive shaft. Each has a Teflon coated slide bearing. The bearings need to be well lined out. Here is the timing belt with the end stop blocks. The end stop blocks fit in the grooves of the timing belt and are fixed with polyester tape. The curved side of the blocks will activate the end stop switches. This is the main drive pulley assembly consisting of two 22 teeth HTD-8M pulleys and one 72 teeth HTD-5M pulley. They are fixed to the shaft with a 5 mm key. Two pillow block bearings hold the 17 mm shaft. All belts are 20 mm wide. The pulley's teeth are fully lined out. Two pillow block bearings are bolted to the floor plate with 8 mm bolts. These are the opposite guide pulleys. The 54 teeth position pickup gear is also mounted to this shaft. This assembly is mounted to the floor plate in the same way as the main drive assembly.
here you can see the end stop block's action. I found that the drive belt tension should not be too tight as it will generate more noise. The end stop switches are normal micro switches with a roller lever. They are connected in series and are mounted at both ends of the belt. The belt position pickup is done via a high quality 10 turn potentiometer. It has a 24 teeth gear on its shaft and makes around 5 turns over the full belt travel. Before the shaft is mounted, the wooden bungee pulleys are inserted. The bearings for this are mounted in the sideboards. The main shaft slides well in the Teflon coated bearings. Some Teflon spray can be used on the shaft. The drive block has the same grooves like the 8M belts. When the drive bracket is screwed on top of it, the assembly will couple the belt firmly onto the drive shaft. Due to the flexibility of the belt, some alignment errors are allowed. Now we can add the sideboards. These are all 12mm high quality multi -packs. In three actuators, the left side holds the motor mount, but in the other three, the motor mount is on the right side. The motor mount is a wooden block screwed with long 8mm bolts to the side boards. Then comes the other side board. And the back plate which will carry the weight. Before mounting the top plate, we first have to mount the bungee cord. Each actuator has around 15 meters of 8 mm bungee shock cord. The center of the bungee cord loops over the drive shaft. Then it goes back and forth between the drive shaft bracket and the actuator bottom bracket. Totally, you'll get 10 strings of bungee pulling the drive shaft upwards. Depending on the tension, one string is good for about 4 to 5 kg force, so 10 strings can push up around 40 to 50 kg. Now the top plate with belt tensioners can be added. The motor is a second hand Ametec. 50 volt DC motor. These are low RPM high torque motors, very suitable for this application. There is a 20 teeth HTD 5M pulley on the motor shaft. The motor is only fixed with hose clamps. 
During my test I found that the motor tends to tilt forward under high load, so some modification is needed. After adjusting the belt tensioners, the actuator is ready for some testing. I have added a T-block with 40 kg of weight to the drive shaft. First I run a series of low frequency sine waves. Here I removed the top plate to check the belt drive operation in detail. The scope shows the motor current with 2 amps per division. As you can see, Slow movement results in very low current, only 1 amp max, which is 36 watts. This low value is due to the bungee balancing action. Here is a fast downward movement. The clunk you hear is caused by insufficient tension of the motor drive belt. Peak current during this movement is around 5 amps, which translates to 180 watts of peak power. Here is a fast upward movement. It is slightly slower than downward, as bungee balance force is less at higher position. The current here is 8 amps or 290 watts. These are a series of discrete position steps showing the maximum speed of the actuator. It also shows the servo loop response which has a slight overshoot. Scope scale is now 5 amp per division. Peak current is higher around 15 amps max or 540 watts. I hope this video gave you some idea of this new actuator design. Based on the first measurements, the measured performance matches the expectations quite well. There are some minor issues to improve, but basically this design is suitable for the 6 degree of freedom platform, which has an expected payload of 180 kg. The special components like motor, pulley, shaft and bearings came from Taiwan. The wooden boards and brackets were made by myself with basic tools. The total material cost of one actuator is around 300 euros. If you would like to check the details and dimensions of the actuator, you can download the Google SketchUp file from my website. Please see the description below for details.